Faith it takes to climb out of this boat of me and onto the crashing waves to step out of my comfort zone into the realm of the unknown where Jesus is and he's holding out his hand. But the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The waves that keep on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says, do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth Oh, what I would do to have The kind of strength it takes to stand before a giant With just a sling and a stone Surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors Shaking in their armor Wishing they'd have had the strength to stand But the giant's calling out my name and he laughs at me Reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed The giant keeps on telling me time and time again Boy, you'll never win You'll never win When the voice of truth Tells me a different story But the voice of truth Says do not be afraid And the voice of truth Says this is for my glory Out of all the voices calling out to me I will choose to listen And believe the voice of truth I will listen and believe, I will listen and believe the voice of truth. There you go. Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful rain, huh? Yep, anybody see my lawn furniture? It's somewhere east, I think. So, but uh, it really, really uh, was, well, uh, we needed it. And so thank you, God, for nourishing the earth. I want to say a special welcome to all of our uh, friends and visitors who uh, come and be a part of our worship during the summertime uh, and other times. But we're very thankful uh, that you're here today. And so God bless you as we share this time of worship. Uh, may we grow closer in our relationship with God through Christ, but with each other as well. So welcome to you. Uh, those of us, uh, those of you who are joining us online this morning, we are grateful for your presence as well. Um, we want to give a shout out to uh, Sandy and Dave. They're in uh, uh, Orange Beach, Alabama, and they're watching this morning, as well as uh, Megan and Matt up in Buffalo, Minnesota. And uh, oh, Gary and Sharon up in Bemidji, of all places, huh? Uh, Peace Lutheran is in Bemidji, how about that? I wish you were sometimes. Well, we're grateful for your presence, whether you're online with us or here or present with us. Uh, God is with us this morning, and so bless you. A couple other announcements. I got a, a text from Mark this morning. Uh, he and 23 others are on their way back from uh, their mission trip to Columbia, South Carolina. 
and they have had a great time. They have served, they have grown deeper in the relationship with each other along the journey and with God. And so uh, they're tired, but they're on their way back home. And so please uh, hold them in your prayers as they travel uh, with their vans and headed back here. And on, uh, let's see here, um, someone check me out here, but July 20, Sunday in July, 20 something. Anyway, that's the, uh, they're gonna be here and they're gonna share their story with us. Uh, on that Sunday morning, and so it'll be a, a great Sunday to hear about all that God did during their trip together. July 23rd. Thank you. Somebody had a calendar. July 23rd. Or it's in the bulletin. No. See, you got to read the bulletin sometimes. <laughs> and then uh, I want to invite you, if you're interested, to uh, stay after the service. Uh, we're going to uh, have a little time to talk about what's been happening here at Peace and the process that we will be, that will begin here shortly as we look at uh, our future needs and uh, explore what that means amongst the congregation in the areas of ministry as peace continues to grow. So Mike Rupp will be here. Uh, I think we're going to just meet right over here and uh, share a time of uh, just information and questions and stuff. So, okay. And then uh, lastly, I, I'm, I'm sad to announce that uh, you all, some of you know Ruth Clark and uh, Ruth's father, uh, who worshiped with us uh, fairly regularly, passed away here and the funeral will be on Monday, so please keep them in your prayers as well. Well, that's, uh, any other announcements? Okay, no? Yes? All right, let's stand. We're going to do some singing this morning. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. journey along our road trip. So bless us today, Lord, as we share this together. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Share the peace.
Let's join together in the confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, it gives the power to become children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to be seated and invite any children here this morning to come on up for a jam. Just in the nick of time. Fireman Glenn's back. Hey! How are you guys doing today? Good? Good. Hey, I was looking at the bulletin here, and inside we pray for a lot of people. Have you ever noticed that? You look in there in the bulletin and see that we pray for people? No, sinking. We pray all the time, don't we? Every single day we're praying. We're praying. Uh, For the people in the program, I remember when I was on the fire department and we'd get a call and I would be in the truck and I'd pray, gosh, I hope everybody's okay. Please, God, let everybody be okay. And then, you know, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But that's God knows. He knows what's best for everybody. So the other thing is I drive a school bus. We went to the Twins game last year pull up in the school bus, tires are spinning, pastor goes, oh God, please let us be safe. So he was praying, and um, last night, the twins were playing, and it was the bottom of the ninth inning, and we had a chance to win the game, and I was thinking, Paul Nesvold sitting at home, praying, Royce Lewis, please get a hit. Is that true, Paul? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So how many of you guys play baseball or softball? Anybody here play baseball or softball? So if you're playing, say, shortstop or third base, do you say, oh, God, please don't let that ball come my way? Or do you say, oh, God, if it comes my way, please let me field it and throw it cleanly to first? Do you ever say that? Or maybe before you go up the bat, Oh, God, please don't let me strike out. Please, God, let me get a hit. Do any of you guys do that? You do? Okay, I see a couple yeses there. You do too? I got to tell you something just real quick, kind of funny. Some of you people in the congregation probably heard of a guy named Mike Greenwell. He was a professional baseball player for the Boston Red Sox. He went to North Fort Myers High. I went to Cypress Lake High. I was a pitcher. Every time he came up the bat, oh, God, please don't let him hit another home run off me, (laughs) which then he did. So anyway, um, just remember that prayer is everywhere, okay? 
And God is always listening, and he is always, always right, and he knows what's best. So everybody just keep praying, and then we're going to do a repeat after me prayer. prayer. Dear Father, teach us to pray, and teach us to be patient and persistent in prayer. If we desire good things, remind us that we need to pray and pray again. And then all God's children said, Amen. one last thing. How many of you guys out here prayed that Fireman Glenn brought a sucker bucket? I want to see all the hands. All right, I got some uh, sheets for you and some suckers. Hi, I am Landon John Jude, and I'm reading Psalms 25, verses 1 through 7. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truths and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and their rebellious and their rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Hi, my name is Addison Johns, and I will be reading Philippians 10, I mean, 4, 10 through 13. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed my cer cur certain curtain for, for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because... I am in need, for I have learned to be content wherever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of content in, in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living or plenty, in plenty or in what want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. The Holy Gospel is from Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. 
And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, he they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early in the morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. And he said to them, How foolish you are, how slow to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his, his glory? And in beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. And so they went in with them. he went in with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it, gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? And they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying it is true the lord has risen and he has appeared to simon and then the two told what they had happened along the way and how jesus had recognized them when he broke the bread the gospel of our lord thanks be to god I invite you to be seated if you wish Well, this summer, uh, this beautiful summer that we are all experiencing in all of its Minnesota glory, um, we will be traveling together. We will be going on a road trip, if you will. So let's pray before we head out. Lord Jesus, we thank you today that you come to us on the road, that you meet us along life's journey, and in that you open up the scriptures to us, and then you show us who you are that we might follow you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. We're going on a road trip. And remember, um, I'm going to take you with me uh, on a road trip that I was on uh, a long time ago. Um, back when dinosaurs were still... When I was, uh, I was, I think I was 12 years old, Okay. So I was 12 uh, years old, and we had a, 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 men, no. It, so, it shows green. Oh, wait, did you do that? Oh, okay. Okay, I forgot to share about the flat Jesus. Oh, that's okay, leave it there. So uh, all week long, we've been receiving flat Jesus. Uh, uh, people have been attaching them to emails and uh, to texts and sending them to the church. If you don't have a uh, flat Jesus yet or have had the opportunity to color it in, uh, stop out at the uh, um, little table out there, and there is both a, a trip kit, a road trip kit, and also a extra flat Jesus that you can take with you wherever you're going this summer. And we're going to be doing this all through August, so you'll uh, be seeing it. 
Uh, but anyway, if you see up here in the picture, uh, Flat Jesus was with some friends uh, this past week, and they were horseback riding together. And evidently, according to the email, uh, the horse and Jesus got along nicely. And so next slide. Will it work now? Okay, and then we got one from Taylor, too. She was out at the regional trap shoot and championship there, and so she took Jesus with and took a picture. Next slide. And then, what do you know? The ministry board was meeting here right at Peace Lutheran Church, and Jesus was, Flat Jesus was here, too. Okay, evidently, Flat Jesus scored some Taylor Swift concert tickets uh, and was with uh, 60,000 screaming fans. You can see them right down front. Uh, at the concert itself. So, next slide. And then uh, back on Lake Minnetonka, Jesus does enjoy uh, being on a jet ski and then watching the sunset on beautiful Lake Minnetonka. Uh, the Langners uh, took all their grandkids to a water park uh, for a couple days, and so they were there, and they brought flat Jesus with. And you'll see there that Jesus uh, baptized the entire Langer family <laughs> And evidently, Jesus was judging a uh, belly flop competition, which Dan uh, got a 10. So uh, on Wednesday, or Wednesday, no, Tuesday, Tuesday at uh, 9 a.m. here at church, uh, we have story time for kids and parents who want to come. And uh, we read a couple books. There's a craft and a treat to be a part of that. And there flat Jesus was as well. And evidently... Jesus, as we know, likes to go out the boat fishing and look at that nice grouping of uh, sunfish that are there. And then from our friends down in Orange Beach, Alabama, looking over the railing from the, their, where they're staying, uh, out into the Gulf of Mexico, Jesus is there as well. All to remind us that, that wherever we go, Jesus is with us and that uh, um, Jesus comes along on our journeys as well. All right. Well, uh, back to what I was saying previously. Next slide. Um, many of you know that uh, kind of have an image of going on a road trip has to do with National Lampoon's uh, uh, vacation with Chevy Chase and the like and the big station wagon that they loaded up. Next slide. Um, but for the Hanson family, back when we were kids, it was a 1965 Pontiac Bonneville four-door brome uh, with fender skirts. Uh, and so that was our, um, what do you call it, a land yacht. And uh, we would take that on a trip. And so we had a trip planned, a summer road trip, if you will. And that summer road trip is uh, going to go from Albert Lee uh, down uh, to Rapid City in South Dakota and then to Devil's Tower. And so that was the whole trip planned out. Even though there was a huge back seat in the Bonneville, it seemed that there was never enough space uh, for myself and my two sisters. We were known for territorial disputes, always fighting over who would get the window because Dad was too cheap to turn the air conditioning on. And um, we never had enough space, so we would draw imaginary lines or boundaries on the seat and say, don't cross that line or you will die. <laughs> um, but as brothers and sisters are, uh, that did happen. They crossed the line and then there was war. And I don't know how many of you know what you can get away with with uh, brothers and sisters, but arm twisters, anybody? Uh, noogies, a few of you, okay. Uh, knee claws, that's where you grab the knee right, right there and give it a good one and so many more techniques that are meant to torture your sisters. They're not here to defend themselves, so I can say whatever I want. Um, well, we'd load up the car, all of our suitcases in camping gear, and we uh, coolers were in there, food for the trip, everything we needed, and Dad would always say, because he said it absolutely every time, everything but the kitchen sink. Well, one important navigation tool that we had back in that day, and for all of you younger folks, this is before GPS was even thought of, uh, was that you would go to the AAA, which is the American Automobile Association, and you would ask them to plan your trip, a triptych, uh, if you will, 
And uh, they would put that together, and it had a spiral thing on the top. And each day, each part of your journey, you would flip it over, and they'd have the whole route marked off. They'd say where there's road construction. They'd say, don't forget to see the big ball of twine and dassel or wherever it is, um, and those kinds of things. And it was something you would use to guide you along on your road trip. Well, so early in the morning, the sun uh, was not quite up yet, and the five Hansons would head off in their 65 Pontiac Bonneville Brone on their road trip. Uh, we would be asleep, sisters and brothers, in the back seat, and Dad would wake us up somewhere around Sioux Falls so that we could see when it actually took place that we went into South Dakota. Big deal, right? And then uh, as we went along, uh, all of a sudden there would be signs along the way that would say, Wall drug, 43 miles, uh, five cent coffee, free water, uh, and stop at wall drug. And so the advertising was quite effective, as well as the giant dinosaur at the end, end exit uh, to the freeway to get to see it, and we would stop. Well, then we're back on the road again, and we head to Rapid City. How many of you have seen this picture? The Badlands, huh? Anybody been there? And you know it's the place you got to stop because there's big signs that say, Badlands, and why not? Um, and so you stop, and it's quite beautiful, and the different colors and the geology, etc. And then as you go on, anybody seen this picture? Yeah, you head to uh, Mount Rushmore. You kind of go through those winding highways right through the pines and the rock outcroppings, and then kind of come up on it, and you see, oh, my goodness, uh, back in the early part of the 1920s, uh, they were uh, carving these faces in, and it's quite incredible to see. Uh, uh, what they accomplished there. And then we'd uh, camp overnight there, and then we would hop back in the car the next morning, pack everything up, and we would head out a little bit further west uh, towards Wyoming. And all of a sudden in the flatlands, uh, we would begin to see this and uh, Devil's Tower. And we'd never seen it before, and so it was quite impressive. And we camped underneath it or nearby, and uh, it was just incredible. In fact, my mom, when she said, she says, wow, how did that happen? And who created that? And, of course, you know, God. <laughs> but um, it was quite impressive to see. You see, road trips, and I know all of you have had them. Um, you, you remember what took place. You remember the, the times that you spent together. And as I think back on it now, I remember the destination for sure. And I remember that feeling of coming home again because it feels so good to come home. I was glad to get to where we were headed uh, on either end of the journey on the road trip, but it was what happened between the beginning and the destination that really made a difference. That's what shaped me. That's what I remember that old adage of T.S. Lewis when he said, the journey, not the destination, matters. Our road trip helped me feel closer uh, to my family. Time I spent with Dad talking about different things that we saw, or Mom would explain some things and we'd get to know each other better. And even my sisters. Well, let's move on. And so, you see, the road trip impacts us. It shapes us. We are going on a road trip here this summer at Peace, as you've heard. Experience an incredible journey where we will get closer to God in Jesus Christ and then closer to each other as we travel along as well. We are going on a road trip with one another and with God. In the Bible, there's a metaphor, a journey uh, that relates to our relationship with God. We can call it a road trip if we want. It's life. It's a journey, a road trip. We go down the road of life with Jesus. And as we travel, we get deeper and deeper into that relationship. We know each other better, the goods and the not so good. God walks beside us on the road. Flat Jesus goes everywhere as we've seen, and it's kind of fun. But the point is, is that God is with us in Jesus Christ in all of those things whether it's uh, traveling along the dark valleys or the detours or the uncertainty, the doubt, to up to the great mountaintops as well and to the grandeur and the glorious sunsets that we might have in life. As we road trip together, God through the Holy Spirit will open our eyes to see 
what we could not see on our own, that there is more to God than we even ever imagined in what he has planned for us in our life. He also opened our eyes to see that there is more to us as well. A long road trip, God shapes us, forms us, changes us through the Holy Spirit into the people that God would have intended us to be. Well, through this summer, if we hang in there, if we do it right, we don't go down the road alone. We do it together, drawing closer to each other as we travel. We become the church that God would have us be. As we go down this road, too, we'll be headed to a destination. But just remember that it is not the destination, but it's the journey together that really matters. Well, as we meet each week for worship, we're going to take out our triptych, uh, uh, the Bible. And with that triptych of the Bible, we are going to look at stories of how um, people were on a road and Jesus met them, encountered them uh, along life's road. You heard uh, the the story read from Luke's gospel. Uh, You know it as the road to Emmaus story. I think I have a slide for that. Yes. And he's walking, uh, the the two disciples, one is Cleopas, the other one doesn't get to be named in the story, are leaving Jerusalem, and they're headed back to their hometown of Emmaus. Now, there's another slide that shows a map of that. You can see where Emmaus is um, and the journey to Jerusalem, and it's about seven miles. And so this isn't a huge road trip. But you see, there's something about the context that you need to understand is that when they were in Jerusalem, what took place? Jesus' trial, Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus' death, his burial in the tomb. All of the disciples were in fear. They were afraid now that the whole thing was over and they didn't quite understand all that had happened. When we are in those moments in our life, in our journey, our road trip, Uh, where we are living in fear, where we don't understand quite what all is happening and we wonder why about things. It is the same for us as it happened to the two disciples on the road. Jesus comes to them. I think this is hugely significant and important because for this reason, we think too often that it is up to us to go to Jesus, right? Right? I got to find Jesus in that. I I I got to do that. When in fact, I believe in most all the scriptures, it is Jesus who comes to us in our lives, and in times where, like the disciples in the story, they did not recognize Him. You ever had a moment in your life like that where things were going on all around you, and you you didn't realize, you couldn't see it, and you didn't think God was there, Jesus was present with you at all? You're all alone on this whole thing. Well, no, he doesn't. Jesus comes to us and walks with us on the road. So we could say, where are you going this morning uh, to answer that question? Well, we're going where Jesus is going to lead us. We're going to have life, and life is on the road. And we're going to be traveling to places and destinations, and we're going to do it together. It is Jesus who leads that. And then what? He meets us on the road. He comes to us. Next slide there. You see that verse is uh, telling. Were not our hearts burning within us as he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Where did they feel that? And in the breaking of bread and in communion. So where does it take place? It takes place within worship amongst the people of God as they gather together for worship. And then that scripture that we had read to us this morning, if you want to go to the next one. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. How hard is that for us to put our trust in God that the next thing we go to, the next destination, the next place along the road, which direction shall we find ourselves, is not up to us but to trust in God. That we will, uh, that it says there that you will show me your ways and teach me your paths. That is so important. How many of you ever used a compass? Anybody? I know, you just pull out your phone, right? There's a compass app on there. huh? Well, for those of you who have compass apps, this is what a real compass looks like. 
Um, and it, it, uh, if you hold it flat, it will what? It will point north. You, so you can always know a true direction, north. For us as Christians, it is to the cross. It points to the cross of Jesus Christ for what Jesus accomplished on the cross for us, that we would know where to go, how to get there. And so we have a a gift for you to take with you today. Our ushers, uh, during the closing song, or the song here, we're going to hand this out uh, to you. You can take it with you. You can put it someplace that you'll remember, put it in your pocket, put it in your purse. And during the week, you're going to go, hey, what's that? Oh, That's that compass Pastor David gave us. And remember, Jesus meets you along the road. Know the true path is to the cross and follow faithfully. In your name, Lord, we share today. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to sing. confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated if you would. Um, this is the time in our worship where we share um, yay gods. And so um, I just invite anyone who has a yay god this morning to to um, share that at this time. So is there a yay god amongst us that somebody would like to... There you go. Got one? All right. We're just uh, letting people have a moment to. Okay. All right. Anyone have one? Wait. All right, so today if we, um, um, Kelly Schubert and I are taking four girls to Lake Okaboji Bible Camp. Addison, Johnsrud, Roslyn Schubert, Addison Paschke, and Sloan Demuels. Um, so if you want to keep them in your prayers, they're going to go and have a great time. And so we're really looking forward to that. So that's our yay God. All right, yay God for going to Bible camp. That's fantastic. All right, Okaboji is a great place too. Uh, my son, who's a motorcycle racer still, uh, got in a vicious crab. Oh, no. <clears throat> Head breeder. Okay. And uh, the man in front of the front wheel locked up, and he went to miss him. That man flew off. Brett rode over him. That man is not hurt. My son had to, uh, had to take an emergency trip. To Brainerd, and then over to St. Cloud, to the tragedy, tra- tra- oh tragic gosh. thing. Didn't know how bad it was. I was at home. Yeah. And uh, we drove up there immediately, and uh, it pretty beat up. Got nine broken ribs, collapsed both lungs. Mm. Uh, he didn't hurt his neck. He didn't hurt his back. He didn't hurt his vital parts, but he, uh, anyways, he operated, and they put all kinds of new metal in his body, and uh, he made a miraculous recovery. And uh, the only part that gets me upset, I've been trying to talk about racing now for 10 years. He's 54 years old. He's still racing. And uh, he, uh, I looked at him, and I walked into the room immediately, and he was really in tough shape. And uh, the doctor came in and he says, well, I suppose this is the last time you're going to race. I said, oh, no, I'm going to go fix the motorcycle. I'm still racing. And I thought, my God, if all those prayers, all that stuff, he's still going to do it. Uh, so all I can ask for is the thanks for him taking care of him in that mess. Yeah. And uh, i got to keep praying that he quits. Yeah. He's too damned old. Yeah. Yeah. But he still wins. That's why he won't quit. <laughs> but God bless him. Because without praying, the whole family, Yeah, uh, I don't know where he'd be. All right. Well, I will continue to pray for him. Yeah. God bless you. You'll give us an update later, too, right? Are you ready? Happy anniversary, 45 years. Congratulations, Stephanie and Pastor. Amazon's delivering it tomorrow. Just just remember, 45 is Sapphire. Sapphire, okay. My yay God is to my new good friend, Tom Nickleby. Um... (laughs) Our family's building a little cabin at our, at our hunting land, and uh, I always thought, well, this ain't going to be so hard until you get into it. And a couple weeks back, I was telling Tom, I said, i got to shingle this thing. He goes, John, I'll come and do it for you. I said, really? 
He goes, yeah. So we talked, and him and a couple other guys, and I've had some other guys come, and man, what a blessing he is. Tom, you're a good man, and thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Good job. That's that one back there, too. Well, this is a Yay God for Miracles. Last Sunday, for those of you watching the broadcast, we were unable to broadcast because the sling needed to be reset. And so Dan Yuncheski, who is traveling for work, came in this week and fixed it. So, Yay God, we're able to broadcast today because of Dan. So, Yay God for Dan and Mary... Uh, and you should know, too, that we had to have a special tool in order to do that, a paper clip. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I got a uh, yay God for Troy Sandin and his uh, landscaping crew. We're doing some landscaping fixing around the church, and the north side of the church got fixed up really, really nice. There was a lot of overgrowth of uh, some evergreens. You- they're not blocking the windows anymore over here, and, and there's some other landscaping. And, yay, God, there's also another opportunity on Tuesday night at 6.30. We're going to spread a bunch of uh, uh, mulch around the church. So if you, I've sent an email to a bunch of folks, but uh, we could always use more help. So if you okay. show up, bring wheelbarrows and forks yep. and rakes, and yep. Rake. we'll get that spread. So All yeah. right. So Tuesday night, come spread it around. I can't pass this up. Yay, God, for the beautiful rain that we had. Absolutely, yeah. That was great. Anybody else have a yay, God, like to share? <clears throat> well, we're going to invite the choir to come up, if they would. they got a great number for us. to, And we're going to receive our offering. And as we receive that offering, just know that you bless us with the gifts that you share. And we are thankful.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of all creation, we come before you today with grateful hearts. We thank you for the water that has come through the rain that nourishes this earth and strengthens those plants and and brings uh, green and newness to all around us. We thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we're mindful, too, that our young people and their adults are with are on their mission trip now. They're on their way back home again, Lord, and we just pray over them and just lift them up to you so that they could be kept safe and uh, return them home to us once again to hear of the good news that they shared. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, too, we're thankful for all the people who are on our prayer list and, and for those that we lift up to you especially Cindy this day and Haley, for Joan and for Curtis and for Tom, for Glenn and Chris and Robert and Renata and for Jeremy. Lord, in your mercy. For our family and friends too, Lord, we are grateful for your healing and comfort, for Cammy and Chris and for Gary and Terry, for Christina and for Kate and Albert. For Brian and Annette and Carrie, for Phyllis and Betty Jo. Surround with your loving care, Gary, this day, and Jim and Richard. Be with John and Pat and Sarah and John and Carol and Riley. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, too, we're mindful of those who grieve loss of a loved one. We pray, Lord, that you would surround them with a hope and a promise of a life everlasting in you, of a resurrection yet to come. Lord, in your mercy. And for those who share in ministry with, Lord, for our brothers and sisters in LCMC congregations in the Augustana District, for those who serve through Love, Inc., Lord, we also want to lift up to you Living Word Lutheran Church in Alexandria, Minnesota, and Living Word Lutheran Church in Marshall, Minnesota. Lord, in your mercy. And for all those who serve so faithfully in the military and law enforcement, first responders and frontline workers, keep them safe, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. For all these prayers, both spoken and unspoken, we trust and we place in your care this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And lead us not in temptation. And lead us not in those who go to us against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to share a a benediction, a a blessing with you that um, comes from uh, Walt Wongren, a pastor uh, who shared this at uh, Valparaiso University Chapel. It's a beautiful one, and it's kind of a one that is uh, about being on the road. And so uh, receive this benediction. May our loving Lord Jesus go with you in the week ahead. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to support you, beside you to be your best friend, and be above you to watch over you. But most importantly, let him fill your heart this day with unconditional love and uncontainable joy. And all God's people agreed and said, Amen. Let's sing.
Just remember there's an informational meeting afterward if you'd like to learn more. Go in peace and serve the Lord. All right. The strength it takes to stand before a giant It's just a sting and a stone Surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors Shaking in their armor Wishing they had had the strength to stand But the giant's calling out my name and he laughs at me Reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed the giant keeps on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth I will listen and believe I will listen and believe the voice of truth